I should like to speak to you for a few minutes on the subject of the yoke. The yoke. I start in Acts chapter 15. The text is uh, quoted below this clip. Acts 15, 1 to 10. Some teachers had come from Judea, Jerusalem, to Antioch. And they were introducing, bringing a new doctrine. They taught the believers in Antioch that they had to come under the law of Moses. The church at Antioch was disturbed by this. Paul and Barnabas were there. And the church sent uh, Paul and Barnabas up to Jerusalem to take it back to where the new doctrine had come from. They were disturbed about it. They thought it was wrong. And they were taking it back to Jerusalem to get it sorted out. And the Jerusalem church called a meeting. It's commonly called a council, but it's not a council at all. It's a church meeting with the apostles there, the elders, and the believers in Jerusalem. This is where the trouble had started, and it was a trouble. Peter, uh, Paul explained the problem, that these teachers had come, saying that believers must be under the law. Now, I'll break off there. I can imagine a covenant theologian now saying to me, no, 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 it was just circumcision. That's what's mentioned in verse 1 and so on. Well, so it is. And of course, it was circumcision. That was the thrust of their argument. But that was only the tip of the iceberg. But as you go on, you will find that it's not just circumcision. In any case, as Paul will say to the Galatians in chapter 5 and verse 3, it's not just circumcision, he says. If you want to be circumcised... He's writing to believe people, believers who are listening to this kind of teaching. If you want to go that route, it's the whole law. You understand that. Galatians 5.3. The truth is, you see, if you take one command of the law, there's 613 of them at least. If you take one, you must take the whole lot. You can't pick and choose with the law. There's a complete whole package. Yes, these teachers, these Jewish teachers were majoring on circumcision. They could have gone for Sabbath. They could have gone for dietary laws. But they went for circumcision. Anyway, Paul explained the problem. Now in this church meeting at Jerusalem, some Pharisees stood up and said, yes, quite right. And if you read the verse, you will see it there. It says, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Some Believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. You'll find that in Acts 15, 1 to 10. The whole law, you see. So it came out in the open in the meeting at Jerusalem. Not just at Antioch, but now in the church meeting. There was much discussion. And then Peter stood up. And he made this point. Why are we doing this? Why are you allowing this? Why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. And some verses I've missed out. He said that these Gentiles have been purified by faith. Uh, the Spirit of God have purified them through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Peter's words I'm very interested in here. He describes the law, not just circumcision, the law that's been raised, you see, in the previous verses, the whole law, the law of Moses. He describes that as a yoke, as a yoke of slavery. And he says, now you know very well, brothers, that we were in, when we were in Judaism, we were under that yoke of slavery, the law. And you know that we could not keep it. You know that. 
And what's more, you knew, you know, our fathers couldn't keep it either. We've all been breakers of the law. You remember that Israel, even before they received uh, the law from Moses, had broken one of the Ten Commandments by making an idol while Moses was up on the mountain away from them. Right from the very beginning then. The yoke of slavery had been unbearable and they'd not been able to keep it. So Peter says, why ever then would you impose on Gentile believers a yoke of slavery that we nor our fathers could ever bear? Think of what he's saying. The law given to Israel, he is saying, and only to Israel, as a special marker for Israel, Deuteronomy, Psalm 147, Romans 2 and 3, Romans 9 and 10 and so on. Read on for yourself, Romans 9 and see. The law which was given to Israel, and only to Israel as a special marker, you want to impose on Gentiles. The law which was given to Israel in the Old Covenant, you're thinking of imposing that Old Covenant law, the stony law, the law of flesh, the condemning law, the outward law. You're thinking of imposing that on New Covenant men and women, believers. And you're thinking of imposing a yoke of slavery upon men and women who are free in Christ. Three grounds. Israel, slavery, a yoke, and a special marker for Israel. New Covenant, imposing Old Covenant. On all these grounds, says Peter, whatever would you think of doing it is ridiculous. It's wrong. And of course the rest of the chapter, Acts 15, and then of course the letters of the New Testament, Romans, Ephesians, Philippians 3, Hebrews, and so on and so on, Galatians, all these letters prove the very point. Believers are not under the yoke of slavery of the Mosaic law. Now I can hear a covenant theologian saying, ah, well, what they mean there is the ceremonial law. No, they don't. Circumcision was not part of the ceremonial law. It predated the law. Jesus says so. John chapter 7. Anyway, it's the whole law here. And as Paul will say to the Galatians, circumcision is only the tip of the iceberg. It's the whole law. That's what we're talking about. You can't divide the law like that. Oh, it's only the condemning part of the law. Rubbish. It's the whole law. Israel was not under the ceremonial law only. Israel was not only under the condemning part of the law. Israel was under the whole law, the yoke, the yoke of slavery. By the way, you know what a yoke is? It's that wooden apparatus put round two oxen, binding them together to compel them to stay together, to pull a load, a heavy load. Or as a milkmaid, she wears a contraption around her neck and on her shoulders to enable her to carry two heavy pails of milk. It's weight, it's burden, it's slavery, it's bondage. It was a symbol of it. It's like a chain, a shackle, a manacle, a yoke. Ah, well, that's only one verse. No, it's not. Is a passage, but even so, you want another one? Try Galatians 5, verses 1 and 2. What does Paul say there? He writes to the Galatians and he says, Do not allow yourself, he said, for freedom Christ has set us free. Do not allow yourself. Stand firm. Do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Don't allow yourself to have this yoke of slavery imposed on you. I was quoting two or three different versions there, wasn't I? For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. What's he talking about? We'll read the previous paragraphs in chapter 4. Read on in chapter 5. Read the entire letter. The apostle is speaking about the whole law of Moses. I quoted Galatians 5.3 twice already. If you allow yourself to be circumcised, he says, 
is the whole law. Don't allow yourselves to listen to these law teachers. They will impose the law on you, the law of Moses. Don't go under the law. For freedom, Christ has set us free. I can hear the covenant theologian. Ah, if you read on, he's talking about justification by faith. And of course, we're not under the law for that. I quite agree. But you read on again, my friend. And see how he moves on into sanctification later in that chapter. Anyway, go to the beginning of the letter. He's already spoken about justification. He's already spoken about uh, assurance. He's already spoken about sanctification. He's already spoken about all these things. Salvation here doesn't only mean justification. It means assurance, sanctification, glorification, and it means liberty now. What Paul is saying to the Galatians, this is not an academic study, he says. Do not allow yourselves to be put under the law, because the law, the law of Moses, is a yoke of slavery. One more text. The believer, however, is under a yoke. He is a slave. Romans 6 says so. But my text is in Matthew 11. Come unto me, all you who labor and so on. Christ's words. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Christ has a yoke. And as Paul will say to the Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 2, Christ's yoke is his law. And he writes his law in our hearts. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death, that yoke of bondage. And what is that law written in the heart? It is Christ himself. Christ is the covenant. Christ is his law. Christ formed in you the hope of glory. That the righteous requirement of the law is fully met within believers. And they are free from the law of slavery, condemnation, death, and bondage. 2 Corinthians 3, Philippians 3, Romans 6, 7, and 8, and so on. Galatians, Hebrews. Christ's law is a very different law to the law of Moses. I've explained this in my book, Christ is All, and also in an EDOC link on my sermon audio site, The Law in the Law of Christ. It's a play on words, you see. God loves to play on words. Christ does. Paul does. Remember Paul? They're not all Israel which are Israel. Remember Christ? Upon this rock I will build my church. Your name is Peter. It's a play on words. And it's a play on words here. We're not under the yoke of Moses. We're under the yoke of Christ. And it's all the difference in the world. There's another word play here which I will not stress or exaggerate or push because I haven't seen anybody else say it. But as a matter of fact, the Greek words, the word for Christ in Greek is Christos. The word for easy in Greek is krasos. I cannot help but think that even in krasos and Christos there is a word play. But I won't stress it. But I will stress this. Acts 15, 1 to 10. Why ever would you impose the yoke of Moses, the slavery yoke, upon believers? I will stretch it from Acts, uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Do not be entangled again. Do not submit again. Do not allow yourselves to be sub, uh, forced to go under the uh, yoke of slavery. And Matthew eleven twenty-eight to the end. Take the yoke of Christ upon you and learn of him. That's a word for the unbeliever. Come to Christ. Repent and believe and submit to Christ in the gospel. Of course, it's a word to the believer. Don't allow yourselves to be taken by covenant theologians, 
the Reformed and the Evangelicals who want to take you under the law. For liberty, freedom, Christ has set you free. Stand firm then in that liberty. Do not be entangled again or made to submit to the yoke of slavery. Do not go that way. But take the yoke of Christ upon you and learn of him. I can hear the covenant theologians say, ah, well, the confessions say, well, so they do. But I have no hesitation. If the confessions, as they do, contradict Acts 15, Galatians 5, and other places, then the confessions are wrong. And these scriptures stand. And I appeal to all covenant theologians, and all brothers and sisters who are in bondage to such men. For once, just put aside your confession and your catechism and let the Bible speak to you. Read Acts 15, 1 to 10. Read Galatians 5, verse 1, and all the verses around them. And then meditate upon Matthew eleven twenty-eight to the end, 25 to the end. And just see what I'm saying to you. Just let those words speak to you. And I think you'll say, New Covenant theology is simple. It is Christ. For Christ is all. The law was given by Moses. And that was a yoke of slavery which the Jews could not keep. But grace and truth have come by Jesus Christ. And by his Spirit. Believers wear that easy yoke. Not that it's sloppy and fuzzy and sentimental, but it's a pleasant, joyful, liberating experience to be in bondage to Jesus. One last thought. Every man is a slave in the world. You're a slave to sin. You're a slave to the law. Or you're a slave to Christ. Which is it for you? If you can see the liberty and the joy and the pleasure in the yoke that Jesus gives, you come in to see the glories of the new covenant. New covenant theology made simple by scripture.